Are you thinking about going to the Wing Tee? Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about three pros and three cons for running the Wing Tee. Let's get into it. Hey coach, Coach Mackey here and welcome to my channel. First time visiting my channel, let me tell you what it's about. Football. If you like that, subscribe. Let's get into it. Today we're going to talk about the wing tee. A lot of coaches think that if they're struggling on offense, throwing the ball, they need to go to the wing tee. I'm going to give you three pros, three cons, why you should and should not run the wing tee. We're going to go with the cons first, then we're going to go with the pros because I like to end on good news. So let's get into it. Cons. Number one. The very first con is kids hate it. Kids do not like this offense. I, I talk about it a lot with a lot of coaches. They say, hey, we used to be a wing team team. Our, our participation was dwindling. We switched it up to go to the air raid or the spread or some form of hurry up offense. The kids love it. They start coming out and we haven't stopped since. So if you're thinking about going to the wing tee, just do not be surprised if participation starts going down and the players start quitting. And do not talk about how it's Fortnite or they're working or they're just slappies. None of that. No, you have to be prepared that it's your offense and only the true hardcore people that love football are going to stay because this is an old school offense that a lot of kids don't like because they're not seeing it on Saturdays and Sundays. Number two. The second con is if you are down in this offense, you're screwed <laughs> again because you don't have that many passes to use to get advantage. You know, wing T teams are all about huddling up, controlling the clock, pound three yards in the cloud of dust. And when you get down 14 or 20 points, you don't have that quick strike capability to get back into the game. And when that happens, you are, like I said, screwed. So you need to have a contingency plan if you want to do this or just go with the fact that, hey, if we are getting beat – and we're getting beat by a lot, at least we can run the clock and get out of here because you will not have a way to catch up. Number three. And the third con is if you're a head coach and you run this, you're going to get passed over for jobs. I've talked to many wing T coaches that are really great coaches. Their programs have success. They've taken really crappy programs that struggle to win games and stuff like that, build them up using this offense, and they keep getting passed over for the next big job because of their offense. Roger Holmes, one of the best coaches in Georgia, hands down the one of the best coaches anywhere in this nation, has told me he's been passed over jobs because he gets to the final three or that final round, and when they figure out or when they ask him about if he's going to change the offense to get more players in, he's like, no, this is what I do, and they pass him up. A lot of ad admin, a lot of supporters don't like the wing tee because they don't get the kids out, they don't get the fans out, and they're not going to hire someone that wants to run the wing tee if they have to choose between a guy that runs the wing tee and a guy that runs the spread which one is more exciting to get fans out because at the end of the day it's not it's it's about the money so you just have to be prepared that if you run the wing tee you may have jobs pass you over just because of that offense and just because of that philosophy Please. All right, now that the cons are out of the way, let's get to the pros, okay? The very first one is if you don't have a quarterback, no problem. No QB, no problem. Why do I say that? Well, a lot of schools struggle to find that guy that throws the ball. Maybe they have someone that throws it maybe five or ten yards, but they're not comfortable with his decision-making and everything like that. With the wing tee, you do not have to do that. You can have a guy just hand the ball off, and if he just carries out his fakes, if he understands the offense, then you are golden because you are giving the ball to different people. You're still distributing the ball, but you don't have to rely on your quarterback throwing the ball or going through his progressions and making the right progression. Number two. The second pro is you know who the ball is going to. You can evenly distribute the ball. When you do that in the spread, you're kind of hoping that your quarterback is thinking the same thing you are. Like, hey, I want you to throw this bubble when it's open. Or, hey, I want you to throw it to this guy on the stick route when it's open. But sometimes that doesn't happen because you're giving up a little bit of, of control to the quarterback and making him do that. Not true in the wing tee. You're like, hey, I want this running back to get it. I'm going to run buck sweep. Hey, I want this fast dude to get it. I'm going to run jet sweep. Hey, I want the fullback or the running back to get it. I'm going to run trap. I want to, I'm going to call the bubble screen and throw him out there. You are in 100% control of the offense, 
And that is a security blanket for some coaches that don't want to give their coaching security <laughs> up to 16-year-olds to make the right decision. They want they get paid to make the decision as a coach, so they're going to use this offense to make sure that the ball is going where it needs to go and that their players, their good players, their, their Jimmys and Joes are actually touching the ball instead of saying, hey, I th- want the ball to go here, but my quarterback, my slappy may throw it on the other side. That is not what happens in the wing tee. Now, make sure you stay to the end because I'm going to show you a little cool little trick that you can use that gives you the best of both worlds and you don't have to worry about anything. But let's get back to the, the pros. Number three. The final pro is you can run this offense if you have a limited supply of coaches. You don't need that many coaches to run this. At the top, at, at the most or the least, you just need three. That is it. Quarterbacks and running backs, B-backs or whatever the hell they call them over there, wings, and then the line. That's it. Or you can have the quarterbacks, running backs, and wings with one coach. You can have the guard and center and then the tight ends and tackles. So you just need three, and you can make this thing really fly and work. A lot of other coaches, if you do spread, you kind of need like outside receivers, inside receivers, running back, quarterback coach, offensive linemen. And some schools don't have that many coaches, or if they do – They're volunteer coaches, and they don't know the offense as well. So this is a really simple offense to run with limited resources, limited coaches, and they love it. Now, if you want to combine both the spread and the wing tee, you need to run the spread, the shotgun wing tee. It has the best of both worlds. It can trick the players into thinking they're running something that they see on Saturdays and Sundays. It can trick the fans and the coaches and, and the admin thinking, hey, we're still spread. But it allows you to still run the wing tee concepts and do what you as a coach want to do. Now, the best thing I've got so far that hands down will work, if you click the link below in the description, that takes you to Kenny Simpson. He's got some great stuff. We did a mini workshop uh, talking about the Buck Sweep. Click that link. Go to the Buck Sweep mini workshop. Get a taste of what you can do out of the shotgun wing tee, and just be successful, man. And until next time, let's continue to master the spread, score points, and have fun.